Welcome to lecture number 36 for ECE 461 control systems, gain compensation using Nichols charts. Now, when you have a closed loop system in the frequency domain, you have to worry about stability just like you did in the time domain. And the frequency domain where instability comes from is as follows. As I vary the frequency, the phase shift of g times k changes. At some point, the phase shift is 180 degrees. At that frequency, I've got negative times negative that gives me positive feedback. If I have too much gain at that frequency, like if the gain is bigger than 1, what I wind up with is a signal that gets amplified, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, goes to infinity. That's where you go unstable. The closed loop gain becomes infinity. That's instability from the standpoint of frequency domain. And you see that at rock concerts. If you have a rock concert and you have too much gain, I get this horrible screeching noise, the feedback. The frequency is a very clean sine wave. That's the frequency where I have positive feedback. If I crank up the gain, then at that frequency what happens is the sound going from the speaker through the air to the microphone to the amplifier back to the speaker has a gain of 1. And it just builds on itself, goes 1 plus 1 plus 1. And if you've ever been at a rock concert, when they have that squeaking kind of start, start, silent, it goes it gets louder and louder. That's the signal building on itself going unstable. That's the condition for stability from a frequency domain. The open loop gain has to be less than 1 when the open loop phase shift is 180 degrees. Um, there's a couple caveats on that, but this is true like 99% of the time. Um, just you got to keep the gain less than 1 at that one frequency. Well, that's where the term gain margin comes from. The gain margin is, is, this, is the plant stable? Meaning that when the phase shift is 180 degrees, how much less is the gain than 1? Basically, how much can I increase the gain and still get a stable system? What's my margin of safety? That's gain margin. Uh, gain margin doesn't necessarily tell you a good system. It's kind of like a Routh criteria. Routh criteria would tell you whether the system is stable, doesn't tell you whether the system behaves well. To find out whether it behaves well, I want to look at the damping ratio. In the frequency domain, damping ratio is resonance. As I change the damping ratio zeta, the maximum gain versus frequency gets bigger and bigger. And that's what shows up here on this sheet for second order approximations. We've been looking at the step response. As the damping ratio gets smaller, I get more and more overshoot in the step response. In the frequency domain, as the damping ratio gets smaller, I get a bigger and bigger resonance. So that's a measure of resonance, or measure of the damping ratio, resonance. The equation for it is the resonance is 1 over 2 zeta times the square root of 1 minus zeta squared. I get if you go back to this curve, if the damping ratio is less than 0.7, there is no resonance. Uh, the M circle, as a definition, is all points where the closed loop gains a constant. That's kind of like the keep away region. Essentially, what I want to do is if the gain is 1, when the phase is 180 degrees, I'm unstable. 1 at 180 degrees is minus 1. If the ever gain is ever minus 1, the, gain is, the closed loop gain is infinity. I want to keep away from minus 1. The M circle is the region that's the equal distance to minus 1 in terms of resonance. That's your keep away region. We'll be using that in a couple of designs coming up. For example, there's a couple different plots. We're going to start with the Nichols chart. A uh, Nichols chart plots the gain versus frequency, where the phase is on the x-axis in degrees, the gain is in dB on the y-axis. Minus 1 is right here. If my open loop gain versus frequency passes through this point, the gain is infinity. If I'm right here on this line, the gain is bigger than 1 when the phase is 180 degrees, I'm unstable. To be stable, I've got to go through here. Gain's got to be less than 1 when the phase is 180 degrees, and the distance to minus 1 is my gain margin. The circles are all points that are equal gain closed loop. gk over 1 plus gk is a constant. So this is kind of my distance to minus 1, where the measurement is closed loop gain. Anything on this circle has a closed loop gain of 15 dB. Anything on this M circle has a closed loop gain of 12 dB. 9 dB, 6 dB, 3 dB, and so on. 
Uh, these are often drawn on the Nichols chart because you kind of see they're kind of weird shapes. Um, so to use the Nichols chart, I really need these M circles. I need to know where's my keep away region. Uh, MATLAB does have a Nichols function, but it doesn't draw the M circles terribly well, and Nichols charts without M circles are kind of useless. So we can write our own function. Um, this is a function called Nichols2, so it doesn't step on the MATLAB function Nichols. I pass it the gain versus frequency and the M circle I want. So this is an amplitude, not dB. Uh, what I do then is calculate what is the phase of g omega in degrees, what is the amplitude in dB, and then on the Nichols chart, plot phase versus amplitude in dB. To draw the M circle, I'm going to pick all phases between 0 and 360 degrees, or 2 pi in readings per second. Calculate the open loop gain is just your M circle at that angle. From the closed loop gain, find the open loop gain, and then plot the open loop gain on that same graph. And what that looks like is this. Suppose I had this system, 2000 over S, S plus 5, S plus 20. Find K so that the closed loop system has a resonance of 6 dB and is stable. The approach then is input the system G into MATLAB, calculate the frequencies, pick the frequencies I want to analyze it at. I just picked 0 0.01 to 100. That's kind of a guess. Uh, what point is too close to minus 1? I'm guessing it's somewhere between 0 0.01 and 100 radians per second. And now calculate gain versus frequency. That's the previous program that we had. Given g of j omega, now plot that on a Nichols chart. And also draw the M circle where the gain is 2, closed loop. This is what you get. The blue curve is g of j omega, phase versus gain at each point, and you get a curve. The M circle are all the points that are equal distance to minus 1 in terms of closed loop gain. So any point to pick on the M circle, g over 1 plus g is 2. This is my keep away region. I want to make sure the closed loop system is stable, meaning the gain is less than 1 when the phase is 180 degrees. And I don't go inside this region, because if I do, I'm too close to minus 1. The resonance is bigger than 2. So what you do with the Nichols chart, then, is kind of see, well, to make a tangent, i got to slide it down that far. That distance is right around 2.5 dB. And so that's k. Uh, another approach is guess, guess again, guess again, guess again, until you're tangent. And at this point, I'm tangent. K is 0.77. So as I change the frequency, uh, the closed loop gain gets bigger and bigger. This is the maximum closed loop gain. That's called the resonance. Then I back off, the gain drops. So now the maximum closed loop gain is 2. And I can check that. If you input k is 0.77, calculate the closed loop gain, gk over 1 plus gk, and plot frequency versus gain. That's what I see. The DC gain is 1. It's a type 1 system. The maximum closed loop gain is right here. Maximum clo closed loop gain is 2, and then drops off. So there I met my, my, met my specs. k is 0.77. Uh, what Nichols charts are really nice for is suppose I don't know the transfer function. I really don't need to know the transfer function. All I need to know in a Nichols chart are these points right here. As long as I can go to the lab and collect some data and get the gain versus frequency when the phase shift is right around minus 152 degrees-ish, that's all I need to find the gain. So what you do is you go in the lab, measure the gain versus frequency at a couple frequencies, here I just chose 5 to 10, kind of guessing the resonance is somewhere in that range. I don't know where it is, but I'm thinking somewhere between 5 and 10. Measure the gain at each frequency. Measure the phase shift at each frequency. I can now plot that on Nichols chart. Adjust the gain until I'm tangent to my M circle. And once I'm tangent, that's K. So here K is 0.38. That's the Nichols chart. Uh, there are other uh, diagrams that are also used. One is the Nyquist diagram. Again, Nichols was Nichols was at MIT in the 1940s trying to help design anti-aircraft guns or 
um, for World War II effort. Nyquist was an engineer that was also in the 1930s, um, designing feedback controllers as well. What Nyquist's approach was, rather than plotting as frequency or phase versus dB, Nyquist just plotted the real part of G of J omega versus complex part. Um, and what you wind up with is a graph. The goal still remains the same. I want to keep away from minus one by a certain distance, and I want to be stable. To draw a Nyquist diagram, this is the same as the Nichols diagram, except that instead of plotting dB versus phase, I'm going to plot real versus imaginary. And what you get is if I take that same system, going to go from 0.01 to 100 gradients per second. G of S is 1000 over S, S plus 5, S plus 20. Um, calculate G of G omega and then plot on Nyquist chart, what you get is this. This point right here is minus 1. If my curve passes through minus 1, um, I'm unstable, gains infinity. If I pass to the left of minus 1, then the gain is bigger than 1. When the phase is 180 degrees, I'm unstable. So to be stable, I've got to take this Nyquist diagram and draw it, set the gain such that when I'm right here at 180 degrees, I'm to the right of minus 1. I'm stable. In addition, I want to keep away from minus 1 by a distance. That's my M circle. The M circle corresponding to a gain of 2 is this guy. It's actually a circle, hence the name M circle. Uh, the center of it is kind of weird, but MATLAB figures that out for you. Basically, the goal is adjust the gain until I'm tangent to the M circle. At this point, that'll be the closest point to minus 1. That's my resonance. That's the Nyquist diagram. Now, Nyquist diagrams are a little bit hard to use without MATLAB. The closed loop gain is kind of hard to find the resonance because it's g over 1 plus g. Here's the origin. This is the point g. This is the distance 1 plus g. So it's the vector to the origin divided by the vector to the minus 1. That's the closed loop gain. Makes them a little bit hard to use, uh, but they do work. With MATLAB, makes life actually a whole lot easier. You just guess, guess again, guess again until I'm tangent, and you got it. Uh, variation on the Nyquist diagram. This is actually how torpedoes were designed in World War II. The problem with the Nyquist diagram is the closed loop gain is hard to see. It's distance to the origin divided by distance to minus 1. If instead I plot the inverse of 1 over g, I get a much simpler system. Uh, to draw an inverse Nyquist diagram, that's not a MATLAB function, so you have to write it yourself. Do the same thing that we did before, but now instead of plotting gain, real versus imaginary, I plot 1 over gain, real versus imaginary. And what you get is similar as an M circle. The beauty of inverse Nyquist diagrams, the M circles are centered at minus 1. And the closed loop gain is just 1 over distance. Take this curve, find the closest point to minus 1, which is pretty easy to find. 1 over that distance is the resonance. Uh, that simplicity is what made inverse Nyquist diagrams uh, classified in World War II. So back then, the agreement that universities had with the Defense Department uh, they weren't going to not teach inverse Nyquist diagrams. Like, you can't tell us don't teach Laplace transforms. It's kind of basic. The agreement they came up with is they would teach inverse Nyquist diagrams, but after class they'd have to erase the board. Um, that was back in World War II. Now inverse Nyquist diagrams are not classified. They're just not really commonly used. Um, but they're really nice because just by plotting 1 over g, resonance, distance to the or maximum gain versus frequency is really obvious. It's the closest point to minus 1. Uh, that's kind of some different options you have. In the frequency domain, if you want to design a gain compensator, what you want to do is keep away from minus 1. And I can do that on an inverse Nyquist plot, where you have circles centered on minus 1. I can do that on a Nyquist plot, where you have circles that are not centered on minus 1. I can do that on a Nichols chart, we have this little oval where minus 1 is somewhere in that oval. Basically, keep away from minus 1. That's the whole idea behind frequency domain techniques. And the M circle is useful because it tells you distance to minus 1. 
And that's lecture number 36, Gain Compensation in the Frequency Domain.